Welcome back to the build. And this week we're going to be taking a look at the chines and I got the top rail of the, what side is this chine? This is the starboard one. So I've got the starboard chine top rail installed already and um, what we're going to do is take a look at the port side and see how I've done this one and take a look at how uh, all of that goes in in this video. Uh, towards the end of this video we're going to have a little talk about um, the kind of project as a whole and a few things that uh, might be on the horizon so we're actually going to be potentially getting a full-size temptress build underway and um, I'd really like to get your guys input on how that might actually happen how that might look um, so towards the end of the video we'll, uh, we'll do that so um, if you're really interested in the project long term as a whole make sure you don't miss that um, right now let's get some chines put in Okay, so this is the top rail. So this is what is going to um, support the side planking when that comes down. And then it's also going to support the chine flat, that lamination that we've already made, which is going to fit down on here. So there's a couple of things to look at just to explain to you what's going on with this here. Um, you can see now that the this top rail is just slightly proud of the frames all the way along. So this is the first example of um, what I've probably mentioned before is that these um, the sides of the boat actually float, so they're not going to be in contact with these sides of the frames. The top side battens and the chine top rail are going to sit just slightly proud of them. And um, what that's going to do in the full size boat is to prevent print through of the frame lines within the, um, the side planking. So that means that our top rail of the chine here needs to be just slightly proud. And that is what you can see here. So um, that is, of course, through all the uh, all the frames aside from the transom. So there's something a little different going on here at the transom, which you can see. And you can also see now the oversized uh, laminations that we have within the transom. So if you remember when we built the transom, we had um, various different layers of laminations and the internal one was smaller than the rest. And that was the one that gives us our final shape for the transom. So you can see that the outer face of this chine top rail is lined up with the outer face of that inner lamination and all the rest of them are going to be trimmed off. The reason that we do that is that we've got extra material within these laminations to give us scope to trim and bevel things. So our inner one is the one that gives us our final dimension sizes and our outer ones have just got a bit of extra stock for slippage and movement and uh, just generally clean up. So we've got that roughly in place and um, I'm just starting to get it kind of fared in so you can see I've got some pins in place here. The pins are really helpful versus clamps because they allow you to see this outer corner of the chine. And this is what you want to be sighting down just to make sure that everything's fair and that there's no um, high spots, low spots, flat areas within the chine. I'm just starting to spring this in forward now and you can see it's looking fairly good. There's a little um, flat spot, probably very difficult for, to see on the camera, but um, just after that pin there that I'm showing in focus now. There's a little potential flat spot there. So we've got a bit more work to do just to get that out. And um, we're in the position now of just starting to land this down forward and into the stem. So what that's gonna involve is just adjusting these cutouts. You can see that that one there is a little bit at the wrong angle at the moment. It's a little bit too shallow. We've got uh, that one around about right. And we're just starting to kind of dial in the landings of all these bits here. So, um, but what we really need to do now is to bring this fully into its correct position within the stem. So what we actually need to do here is that this outer face here needs to finish on our center line. So that's how far in we need to go. You can see the notch that we've cut for the chine flats. Um, but that's where we need to finish up. So with this face lining up with that center line. But um, we want to do that probably with both chines at the same time. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start to get this uh, port side uh, chine top rail put into place. And I'm going to show you how I did it on the first one. And um, what we'll do is we'll get it to the same position as the one on the starboard side. And then we'll bring the two in together and we'll try and get these notches cut at the same time when we can spring both in and just get a good balance between the two. So um, let's get going on that. I'll take you uh, through how I did it. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna take a look at is this little tool, which we're gonna to use for marking out the chine top rail. 
Now this is a little section of the top rail stock, which is going to give us our correct um, cross-sectional dimensions for the top rail. And then it's got this little guide piece here, which is glued onto the top of it. And then you can see this little shim here as well. Now this little shim is what's going to give us the offset. So I mentioned just before that the, um, the top side buttons and the chine top rail are slightly gapped from the side framing and this little shim here is going to create us that gap to give us the correct marking position. Um, now this is 50% of the top side batten thickness so that's what gives you that gap and that's what it uh, references in the plans. So how do we use this little device? So what we're going to do is to use this guide to get our notch marked out on the frames. There are a number of ways that you can approach doing a timber like this and basically you want to get one of these faces flush and then the other one will be beveled off. So we could do that in this way and we could have this face here flush with the chine flat that's in this direction and then what we're going to have to do is to move that timber out until this lower edge here is where it needs to be flush with the um, side frame or slightly proud as we're going to actually do it and then you'd bevel off this section here, this top corner, and take that into the angle of the frame. That's not actually how we want to do this boat. What we want to do is to have our chine in this direction so that this outer face is parallel to the outer face of the side frame. And then we're going to bring it up until this back corner here is flush with our chine flat. And then it's going to be this top edge, top outer edge that we're going to bevel off to, um, to make everything fit. So this little tool here is going to help us to mark that and uh, as I mentioned this little shim is going to give us our gapping so that is going to fit up against the outer face of the frame and as we slide up and down what that's going to do is to keep this timber here correctly referenced on this outer face to the, uh, to the side frame. Then we're going to lift this up until this inner back corner here is level with our chine flat and we could use another little marker just to help us get that right. So a ruler just across here look is going to mean that we can bring that up just until that face reaches the chine flat. And then we have our piece in the correct position. So then what we can do is get a nice sharp pencil and mark around the back side of that. So you can see that gives us the notch to work to and this inner face here is parallel to the face of the um, side frame which is what we want and then this line here is in the correct plane obviously 90 degrees to that one perpendicular but it's set at the correct height so that when the uh, timber is in there this top corner here is going to be at the correct height and this corner out here is going to be slightly high and that's going to be the one that will bevel off to take it parallel with the chine flat. Okay so let's get that system rolled out across all of these frames and uh, we'll take a look at what uh, what we've got. Okay, so you can see those notches then marked out all the way throughout the boat and how they vary. Of course the angle gets steeper as you come forward and then this timber is essentially coming up slightly higher because you need more uh, material to get this inner corner in the right place so there's going to be a, a higher bevel angle on that face as we come forward right up to uh, frame one. So. That gives our position and uh, we'll start to trim those out. So my advice really is just to use these as, as rough guidance 
don't cut right over the line, leave the line in place as your sort of reference guide, cut inside it, leave a bit of material there. Uh, there really is no substitute for just springing a timber in here and doing a double check for everything that looks fair. Um, so uh, we'll get cutting those away and then we'll, uh, we'll take a look at what it looks like. Just another note that I've thought of, of course, um, when we get forward, the angle of this is coming in quite steeply. So you'll note that I've marked all of these on the aft side of the frames. So that is gonna give our guidance for a, a square cut through the frame. And then what we're gonna do as we bring the timber in, we're gonna to start to put that bevel on. So we'll bring the forward end in. So the forward end of this notch will actually be quite a bit further in because remember our frames are still square at the moment. These aren't beveled. And uh, the chine will actually give us the reference for how we bevel that frame. So. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to cut these, they could be square, but um, you can also sort of approximate the, the angle that it's going to come in and you can kind of gauge that really looking down from the top. Um, or you can cut them square and then just spring the timber in and, um, and slowly get that position correct. But um, that's a kind of, you know, how your preference of working is, I suppose. I will probably just approximate these and um, then slowly dial them in and get things sitting perfect. So um, yeah, mark them on the aft side of the frame and then we'll pull in that forward edge as we bevel it. So let's go. Okay, so notches are roughed out. And um, as you can see, they are very roughed out. Um, I personally prefer to just kind of get a little bit of material out of here so I can get a timber in there. I can start to see what's going on and then I can make tiny little adjustments with a chisel um, just to take this down slowly, a little bit at a time, especially on this scale because actually my saw is way too big for the size that I'm working on here. You know, I'm trying to cut in this notch but the blade is catching on the frame behind so I've got to be very careful not to do that. In reality on a full size boat you're going to have plenty of working room in between these frames to be doing this sort of work but on quarter scale it's a little bit more tricky. So um, I've just roughed those out, we've got plenty of material left there as you can see from where we actually need to be. Our angles aren't necessarily perfectly right but they're roughly in the right place good enough for me to just get a timber in there and see what's going on so let's do that let's put some timber in so starting back aft then i've got this timber just clamped in place and the first thing i'm going to do is to get this brought into the um into the transom so i haven't yet cut a notch in that and You can see that that's, uh, that's sprung out significantly. We need to bring it in until it matches, fits into this notch. And as you remember from the other side, we need to take this into the transom until this outer face is lining up with this little internal lamination line here. And that will look something like that. So, Let's, uh, let's cut that in.
Okay, so I'm slowly getting all of these landings cut in and um, quite a nice little technique that I've got for that is that I've just got a pin put into the transom back here and that's allowing me to just lift this uh, chine top rail in and out, up and down, and that just allows me to kind of place that and sight down the boat, take a look at what's going on and um, see if anything needs to come up or down on any of these little notches and um, move it out of the way. And then I could just take a little shave off with a chisel and then drop this back in and see how that affects things. It's quite nice to be able to just be able to place that and move it around. So obviously on the full size boat, this is gonna be quite a substantial timber, but you could do that probably with a big screw in the back there and you could lift this up and you can just rest it on the chine flat to get it out of your way whilst you make a little adjustment along these chine landings. So um, there's a lot of that, a lot of sighting down this and, uh, and getting it perfect. A few people have asked before why we don't do these cutouts on the CNC and um, you could do, but in, in my opinion, there is no substitute for just sighting down that chine and making sure that that's beautiful and fair. You'd be amazed at the accuracy that you can pick up for flat spots and high spots, low spots, um, to get that just spot on. And, um, you know, if you've induced an error anywhere along the way here, and that is quite perfectly feasible with building a boat like this, you know, you've got a frame slightly in the wrong position or shifted. If these notches were CNC cut, that's gonna actually steer this chine in the wrong direction and then you end up having to shim it and bring it back out to where it needs to be or cut out more material. So I personally think there's no substitute for doing it this way. So um, we'll carry on uh, making some adjustments and we'll get this chine in nice and fair. Okay, so both of the chines are um, looking pretty nice and fair now, actually. You can see I've got them pinned a fair way down the boat, and if we just spring this one in, you can see we've got a nice line there down that chine. It's maybe wants a little bit of a tweak here and there, but it's looking pretty good, which is nice. And uh, spring the second one in as well. You can really start to see the shape of that boat coming together now, which is quite cool. So, I've started to get this chine 
top rail notched into the stem and this is really a case of as i've said before we're kind of balancing all sorts of things here so we're doing some little adjustments to these notches uh, frames one and two where the angle needs a little uh, tweak as we bring the timber in of course we can't bring that timber straight in right away because it's not correctly positioned within the stem which means we can't really fully adjust these two cutouts so it's a case of doing a little bit of everything all at the same time and um, this this notch this bevel here how did i arrive at that i'm not entirely sure if i'm honest with you <laughs> full disclosure there um, i just kind of started um, i did a rough cut on the chine initially here just to get some of my material removed and get that um, you know roughly parallel to the side of the stem but then I've just I've taken a little bit of a notch out the stem here the same way that we did the chine flat one and I've just been putting this timber in seeing how it fits taking a bit off the angle of the chine timber a bit off the angle of the stem back and forth until we gradually get dialed in and what we want to be aiming for is that when this is pulled in like so, um, this face of the chine top rail wants to land on our center line there, which you can see it's very nearly there. So when we bevel our stem, it's gonna to come to a point right on that center line because we did the profile, the outer profile before. That can now be our guidance. So that's where we wanna finish up and you can see we're very nearly there. So, you know, it's just a case of taking a little bit off the inside of this angle here, perhaps deepening that notch slightly until we're in the right place. Um, this has an angle on here rather than just being straight through. Initially, I thought actually this timber might just go straight through and the notch would be deeper within the stem, but I think that's gonna to remove too much material from the stem and make it a bit fragile, which is not really what I wanna do. So what we've got is a, um, a sort of two-sided coin I suppose where we're taking a bit of material off the chine and we're taking a bit off the stem and um, we're finding a balance so that we don't eat into either one too much but um, yeah primary goal is to end up nicely landing on all these frames a good fair curve as well which I think we've got And um, yeah, finishing right bang on our center line of the stem. So yeah, looking pretty good, I think. I quite like that. So uh, I'm gonna do the same thing again on the um, port side chine top rail. And um, yeah, we'll be ready to put those in, I think. Looking nice. Okay, so chine top rails are in. You can see how the two of those meet now up in the stem, so they're, they're pretty well on target for this outer face, lining up with the center line of our stem. We've got a nice fit down all of the frame stations, so that's good. And uh, they're pretty nice and fair. I can't really fault that, to be honest. So uh, when you're fairing in chines, battens, things like this, having a nice sharp outer corner is absolute essential really. As I said before, you'd be amazed how accurate you can be by just, you know, run your eye line down that chine and just catch that corner all the way down. You can see actually the tiniest little flat in it or high spot and it just, helps you to get everything looking just right. Nice and fair and even, that's what we want. So we are there with the chine top rail.
Okay, so the chines are all pinned in. We've got these fixed at every uh, frame station now. And what we need to do is to bevel this top face. If you remember when we were marking that out, we've got this outer corner here, which is a little bit high, and that's gonna need to be flattened off to um, take the chine flat. So I'm just gonna do that with a little block plane. Um, there's a number of ways you could do that. You could transpose these flat lines of the, um, all the chine flats back out through the, uh, through the chine in a similar way that we did the keel, I think it was. Um, and you could use them as your guidances at each station to, to get flat, to be honest. I'm just gonna go at it with a block plane. It's only a fairly small bevel. bevel. It's only a fairly small bevel and um, we'll, we'll just um, get it in, try the chine flat on there and um, yeah, see how we go. So let's get cracking with that. Okay, so that is how we look with the chine flat lamination installed. So you can see that that chine top rail is going to take our chine flat lamination. Here we go. And you can see um, just how oversized this is. In reality, I think I could probably lose a bit of material off of that within the plans. That's probably a little bit too much um, for, for needed to, uh, to trim these laminations, but I guess it accounts for a decent amount of slippage. It's fairly easy to do. I mean, I can just run a pencil line along under this now and uh, trim that lamination down, which is probably what I'll do off the boat. Um, and we'll get that flushed in. And if I just take that off, We can take a look down how that chine looks now. So you can just see that bevel on there that gives that top face a nice flat landing for the uh, for the chine flat. Okay, so there is one thing that I've uh, realized with doing this, I would definitely do differently going forward or on the uh, full size boat. Um, if you remember, we actually laminated this chine flat quite some time ago when we um, set up all the frames and we did all the laminations um, when we were doing the stringers i think we did this uh, this chine flat what i would actually do is laminate this chine flat at this stage now so after this top rail is in it just gives you that opportunity to fare everything out nicely and to get a, a good flat surface and being able to clamp down to this top rail is really going to help to get this lamination um, really good and nice and flat. Now that all worked out okay actually with um, the way that I've done it but I just think if I was doing this again I'd do things that way around for sure. Um, it makes sense to have that top rail to give a really good support to this chine flat to clamp to and get it fair. So um, there's one little lesson learned. I would do things a little bit differently but um, yeah all, all looking good anyway. So next thing to do is to get that glued up. I'm going to bevel the chine top rail on the other side of the boat and I'll get the um, the laminations glued in I'll probably get this trimmed down to size actually and um, yeah that will be the chines done and I think next video we'll start putting the bottom one so that'll be quite an exciting uh, an exciting video we're going to um, we're going to do look at the cold molding process so at the start of the video you might have noticed that i had some planks laid out on the bottom which illustrate the uh, the way that the cold molding planking is going to be done on this boat and that was because i had this at a boat show a couple of weeks ago and uh, we were doing kind of demos and and showing uh, how that's going to happen so that's going to be coming next we'll um we'll get these chines glued in we'll get the bottom fed 
a little bit further and then um, we'll start doing some planking so we'll be doing like spiling of planks and things like that a little bit more fairing work and we'll be um yeah doing a tutorial on the process of cold molding and we're even going to do some vacuum bagging as well so it'll be um quite a nice stage to get to so that we'll really see the bottom coming on with the boat okay so we're going to leave it at that for this week i'm going to get that glued up and then we'll be on to uh, doing the bottom in the next video so what about building a full-size one um, this is a very uh, real potential possibility, something that I really am keen to make happen and uh, that's kind of been my long-term goal all the way through doing this um, build. This is meant to be a kind of trial run for potentially getting a full-size build underway and um, a lot of people have been asking me uh, if that's going to happen. Um, somebody even commented on the channel and said, why am I playing around with models like a child? Well. The reality behind that, I'm afraid at the moment, is that um, this is my business, boat building is my business, and um, it has to therefore cover my overheads, which is my uh, my rent to my workshop, and obviously my uh, wages so that I can um, eat. So um, there's basically two slots, two spaces within my workshop, and um, both of those need to be taken up with uh, boats that basically pay the bills and, and cover things. I would very much like to start a build, but in reality, it needs to be um, funded in one way or another. Um, now, there's a couple of ways that, um, in fact, there's many ways that I've kind of thought we could potentially make this happen. And um, I've kind of been holding off, maybe thinking, um, you know, we might potentially get some interest for an order for one of these. It's gonna be the catalyst to make that go. Uh, now I'm starting to think that actually, do we just kind of start a build and, um, see what happens really there's quite a lot of work to do on the boat before it gets to the stage of actually having to be set up down in the workshop so that means i've got a lot of work that i can do actually up here in the upstairs workspace before i can start to set things up so there's a possibility that i could get one underway and um, and do it that way and then um you know we've only got to really pull the trigger on it on it when it comes to uh, setting up downstairs but i really want some input from you guys as to um you know, I've thought of so many different ways we could make this happen. Um, we can kind of do like a crowdfunded thing, basically, where I thought people could sort of um, pledge some money to have one part of the boat with their name on it. So we could do like a planking thing with on the boat where people pay to uh, to purchase a plank within the boat and it's got their name on it. And then we'll we'll do you know some kind of video of that when we put the planks on the boat. Various different parts. Um, I'm looking into various funding sources and ways that we can uh, generate some income to uh, to get that at least started the boat. So um, there's a there's a lot of possible different ways we can go. Obviously, if the YouTube videos do really well, then um, that can begin to fund it. And I kind of think maybe if we just get started, uh, things might come along. Let's be honest. If uh, if Leo had uh, waited to start his restoration of Tally Ho until he had the money sat in the bank, he would have never got going on it. So um, yeah, maybe we just we just buy some timber and get going, I don't know. Um, I'd be really interested to hear what you guys think. How, have you got any ideas for how we could maybe make this, um, make this happen? Also, if you are at all interested in ordering a boat, obviously that is gonna be the catalyst that will certainly make this happen. So if, um, you know, if you'd be interested in commissioning a full-size temptress, definitely get in touch because um, that would be fantastic. Certainly if you would be happy to see your boat built throughout a YouTube series so you can follow the whole progress of its build uh, being documented, that would be a really good thing to do. Um, so yeah, ideas please guys. If you've, if you've got any, really love to hear them and um, be something that I'd really like to make happen. In the short term, uh, there's a couple of ways that we could just help to, to get this rolling and um, there's various things like I've got my patron set up now so if you guys want to um, get some early access videos behind the scenes stuff uh, help to just kind of support the project and the channel then um, you can hop onto patron and, um, and support that way it really much very much appreciate that um, we started doing some merch so you might notice my nice little new uh, temptress t-shirt so you can go on to the uh, spread shop thing and uh, buy yourself one of those if you want a little portion of that sale comes back to me and that all goes into the pot which will also help things as well or you can just watch as many of my videos as you like and um, share them and that helps everything grow and everything works so um, there's a number of ways let me know what you think I'd be really interested to hear what your ideas are and I'd really love to get one of these going if we can do it it would be a fantastic project I think so um, let me know what you think 
Thanks for watching. Catch you soon. Cheers, guys.